نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم صدق الله العظيم Last week we covered the family and the forefather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were all on the religion of Hazrat Ibrahim alaihi salam we spoke about the dominant tribe the tribe of Quraysh we also spoke about the greatest leader of Quraysh the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Abdul Muttalib We also mentioned the life of Hazrat Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his marriage to Hazrat Amina. We covered the incident of Abraha attempting to destroy the Kaaba, and also we covered a portion of the miraculous birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, before we begin this next session. There will be some incidents today which will be quite unusual for the usual for the normal human being to comprehend because these are called miracles and a miracle is something which is not normal so it is maybe an eye opener it may be a shock for you and a miracle is something unusual but it is done through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the important point is the difference between a miracle and magic is that magic is a trick which deceives the human eye and magic is assisted by the evil jinn and shayateen and on the other hand a miracle is a divine assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is not an act of the prophet himself it is all done through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using the prophet as a tool to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might and power <coughs> so we need to know the difference between what is magic and what is a miracle because we will be mentioning a few miracles today inshallah so we turn to the first page last week we left on the way the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born and the way he was born that when at the time of his birth he was in the state of sajda and when he looked up he was looking at the mission ahead of him now a few days later on the seventh day hazrat abdul muttalib <coughs> takes him to the kaaba to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he performs his aqeeqah and to this aqeeqah he invites the quraish the tribe of quraish for this function and he announces that this boy of mine his name is going to be muhammad so the quraish they were alarmed that muhammad never heard of this name before our our forefathers your father forefathers have never kept a name like muhammad before why do you keep such a name and abdul muttalib replied that i want allah in the sky and his creation on earth to praise him because muhammad means the praise one now before his birth The reason he called him Muhammad before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Abdul Muttalib has a dream. And in this dream he says that I seen a chain extracted from my back towards the sky and a chain coming out from the front towards the earth and one chain towards the east and west. And that chain suddenly turned into a huge tree with so many branches and from each branch the leaves that were glittering they were glittering 70 times brighter than the sun and many people were clinging onto these branches of the tree from the east and west and many people of Quraysh were clinging clinging onto this tree but there was a small group from the Quraysh tribe who were trying to chop this tree down 
And as they got closer to this tree, there was a young handsome man who would drive these people away. So this was the dream. So when he went to the, have this dream interpreted, he was told that a boy will be born and people from the east and west will follow him. And all the beings of the sky and all the beings of the earth will sing his praises. So this is why Abdul Muttalib kept his name Muhammad, which means the praise one. And this actual concept of Muhammad sallallahu being praised lives with us today. We live in the era of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu being praised on a daily basis every minute of the day. And there's an email which was sent to me some time ago. It's regarding the miracle of the Adhan. And there's a fact about the Adhan beginning all the way from where the sun rises from the east. At 5.30, the Fajr Adhan takes place in Indonesia. And at that time, thousands of other cities in Indonesia, they begin the Adhan. And as the sun is moving, it goes on that by the time they finish Adhan in Indonesia, Malaysia start the Adhan. By the time they finish in Malaysia, it goes to India. All the countries around India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they all start the Adhan. Then it reaches the Middle East. And it reaches Africa. By the time it gets to Africa, the whole time begins in Indonesia again. And this Adhan, the Fajr Adhan moves on into Europe and all the way across to America, and at that time Indonesia have started their Asr. Once it reaches America, and all the way back down to Australia, the Isha, Maghrib, Isha Adhan are going on in Indonesia. So throughout the whole day, there's not even one moment where the Adhan doesn't take place. And what do we mention in the Adhan? Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being praised throughout the day. Even now when we're sitting here, people, some places Fajr is being called out, Ghamr is being called out. Asr, Maghrib, Isha, all these Adhan in their own countries, at their own time they have been called out. There's not even a single minute which passes by in the day where the Adhan is not being called out. This is a miracle within itself we live, with. we live in this day and age. Now, and this praise will continue until Qiyam. So after that, it was the custom of the Arabs to circumcise the children because this circumcision began from the time of Hazrat Ibrahim السلام, who circumcised his son Hazrat Ismail السلام. so all the followers of Hazrat Ibrahim السلام, the Jewish religion, the Christian religion, the Muslims they performed circumcision the correct Christian which used to follow the creed of Ibrahim they also used to do circumcision as well now there's two different opinions one, the Prophet ﷺ was born circumcised. And the second opinion is that Abdul Muttalib, he carried out the circumcision of Rasulullah So there's a difference of opinion in that. So, after that, it came, the custom of the Arabs again, well, when the children were born, they would send these children to the outskirts of Mecca. And they would send them to the Bedouins to have them fed, breastfed to, to wet nurses. And the reason they'd send them away from their own hometown, their own, their own village, to the outskirts of Mecca, is to go into a healthy environment, to learn eloquent Arabic, to acquire excellent character, and stay away from all the hustle and bustle of society, away from all this disturbance, and they can grow up in a nice, healthy environment. Now, in Hadith, there will be mentioned that three ladies breastfed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first one was his mother, Hazrat Amina. The second person was Thuwayba. She was the slave girl of Abu Lahab the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at the same time the enemy later on became the enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born Thuwayba she ran 
to her master, Abu Lahab, and said, Glad tidings, you have become an uncle. There's a nephew born, a young boy. His name is Muhammad. And as soon as he heard this good news, she said to Thwaybah, Go, oh, you're free. So she freed, he freed Thwaybah. Now, Hazrat Abbas, later on, after Abu Lahab had passed away, he said, how he seen a dream, and he asked Abu Lahab, how did Allah deal with you? Because he, he died as an enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So Abu Lahab mentions that this hereafter is very punishing. I'm going through extreme torture, and this is unbearable. But yes, only on one day, I get a fingertip of water. That same finger I used to free my slave girl Thuwaiba on hearing the glad tidings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with that fingertip I get and my punishment is reduced only on Mondays. So just for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduces his punishment. Just because of that glad tidings, just because he freed his slave girl Thuwaiba. So Thuwaiba was the second person to breastfeed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the third person was Halima Sadia. Halima Sadia relates her own story and she says we set out on the annual journey from Banu Sa'ad, the tribe of Banu Sa'ad towards Makkah in search of infants to bring them back. It was me, my husband and my son Masroof. And he was a small child who was still breastfeeding. And for our conveyance, we had a donkey and a very weak camel, a lazy camel. And the, one, the camel wouldn't even provide a drop of milk. And at night time, it was very difficult for us. We couldn't sleep because of our hunger. And the child would cry all night because I, could, I couldn't pr produce sufficient milk for my own child. So in search of an infant, all the ladies were offered to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they all rejected. The reason was, when they heard that this child is an orphan, they said, no, we don't want him, because who's going to pay us? We're going to look after him for a year, and he has no father, who's going to give us our wage? So they all rejected him. So when it was time to depart, all the ladies, the wet nurses, they had received, they had got themselves a child, and Halima Sadi was the only one who never had a child. And she said that if I was to go back without coming all this journey from Banu Sa'ad, coming to Makkah, and not to receive a child, not to take off, it would be very punishing for me. So uh, let me pick this orphan up and take him. May Allah SWT give me barakah in this child. She does this dua. Now, the word barakah means it's a divine benefit and goodness that appears directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any apparent exterior cause. And barakah doesn't mean abundance. Barakah means sufficient. There's one hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana inda zanni abdi. That I am with my servant, I deal with my servant the way he thinks of me. So when a person is doing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's doing dua, but he has a doubt in his mind that may Allah may give it to me, he may not give it to me. Allah says, I, will do that. I won't give it to him because he doesn't have that full yaqeen in, within me. But if he does dua with full yaqeen upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with full sincerity, and leaving all his matters in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he really needs this from me, he, he holds his trust in me, therefore I will provide him because he thinks of me because I know I have to give it to him. That's how he thinks. Now through this expectation of barakah, Allah SWT opened the doors of barakah for Halima Satira. She says that I grasped the child to my chest and to my surprise, I began to feed him. And my milk then wasn't only sufficient for this young blessed child, it was also sufficient for my other son Masru as well. Then after that my husband went to milk the dried out camel. And as he approached the camel, 
he was surprised that the udders of the camel were full and swollen, swollen with milk. So we drank that night, we drank milk, and we spent that whole night in comfort. Now it's time to depart to Mecca. Now all the travelers demounted their animals, and Halima mounted her camel with this blessed child, Rasulullah Now this camel was overtaking all the other camels. So everyone was looking that Halima Sadia with this lazy camel who used to get whipped on the way, was always stayed behind. And she said, Oh Halima Sadia, it is that same camel, it is that same that Toyota, now we've got a Ferrari engine inside, it is that same thing. So she said, I swear, this is the same camel. I haven't changed my camel, it's that very same thing, that very same camel, which I used to whip on the way here, but now it's overtaking, it's because of this child. And as they returned to Banu Sa'ad, that was the only region at that time which was hit with a drought. And when Halima Sa'ad used to send her goats out to graze, and when they would return, all the other goats, they would return dried out with no milk, and Halima Sa'ad's goats, they would come with others full of milk. So they decided, okay, we're going to send our goats to the same place where Halima Sadia sends her goats, because probably got a different place for her goats. So when they would send the goats the same place with the same goats with Halima Sadia, when they would return, again, Halima Sadia's goats were full of milk and the others were dry. This was the blessing of Rasulullah upon the family of Halima Sadia.